on today's show. Tesla, WLTP, NEDC and EPA. Polestar steps up and a little bit more. G'day, my name's Chris and I cover from an Australian perspective everything around renewables like electric vehicles, battery, wind, solar and more. If you're new to the channel, thanks for coming along, I do appreciate it. If you want to enjoy more content like this, feel free to subscribe, it's free. And if you want to take your support to the next level, join us over here on Patreon where you get early access to news, behind the scenes, polls and content that I just can't show you here. And a big thank you to my producers, Adam Tyson, Alan Burnt, Ashley Hill, Chaotic Media Technology, MNICT Specialist, Nigel Ferrier, and Tessa Nagong. Okay, first up, and apologies in advance. You can get it editing. You can get it driving. A hard-earned thirst needs a big electric truck. Yes, Victoria Bitter, a beloved Australian beer, is now delivering its beers with the aid of Volvo FL electric trucks. Capable of doing 250 kilometers from its 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, the Volvo FL has a combined power rating of 200 kilowatts and 520 newton meters of torque. Lynn Fox, who is responsible for distribution, filled the Volvo truck with 100% renewable power, and no doubt you can feel good about drinking a beer that is renewably sourced from beginning to end. Okay, time for a round of bites. Good news, Victorians, we might be getting another Tesla big battery, twice the size of Hornsdale. So let's call this one the Mega Battery. A 300 megawatt, 580 megawatt hour grid connected battery capable of two hours of storage, frequency control, and other grid services. To be built independently by Lumia, a commercial offshoot of uh, company TransGrid, this announcement is significant because these guys are going to go in it alone. No public financing here, folks. Nope. And secondly, it's near my home. So aerial videos, you bet. Australia currently is going through a revolution with this project among 50 others of batteries, which makes you wonder why this guy is pushing with gas. It doesn't make sense. Lumia hopes to build this battery in the next 12 to 18 months, and it's currently seeking expression, expressions of interest. So if you want to learn more, please do follow the link down below. Citron UK has announced details of its new eSpace Tourer designed for large families or taxi services. This people mover is priced from $58,000 Australian to an eye-watering $89,000. The Citroen Space Tourer can move up to nine passengers in its five meter form factor. Powered by a 50 kilowatt hour battery and connected to a 100 kilowatt or 136 horsepower electric motor, the eSpace Tourer has a range of up to 220 kilometers on the WLTP cycle. Supporting up to 100 kilowatt rapid charging, an 80% recharge would take 30 minutes. At home charging would take seven hours and a bit with thanks to its onboard 7.4 kilowatt charger. Sadly, Citroen do not plan on bringing this out to Australia at this moment in time, but nonetheless, it's compelling and I think we'll do very well here. Volkswagen has announced that starting now, the brand will regularly send software updates over the air to models in its ID family. Pioneered by Tesla, these OTA updates will mean that owners will continue to have features, technical operations that are up to date, and ultimately, your ID will be on a similar footing to those that have just left the factory. Nice should help resale value, maybe? Comment below. Polestar announced at the Beijing Auto Show that the Polestar Precept, initially touted as a concept car in 2020, is now under full-scale development and will enter production in coming years. Originally touted to showcase Polestar's ambitions in terms of design, sustainability and technology, the Polestar Precept looks mighty appealing, modern and my hope something we'll see in Australia very soon. If you want to learn more about this car, follow a link below where there's a documentary series being released week after week right now by Polestar and it's absolutely fascinating. Only three and a half minutes, so please do go check it out. My final story for this episode is a reminder that all is not as it seems when it comes to cars and range. 
doesn't matter if it's petrol power, diesel or from electrons. Claim range will be affected by a multitude of factors. Last week, Tesla Australia finally did something that I've been saying they should have done a long time ago. Showing WLTP range on the website. For international viewers, particularly those in Europe, this might be, huh, we had that here Chris. And my American friends, we use EPA. Fantastic, both a lot more realistic of range that you could expect from your new EV. But Tesla Australia was sticking to the Australian design rule, which requires car makers to adopt the grossly inaccurate NEDC method of estimated range. In a moment, I'll break down the difference between all of these and explain why you need to basically ignore them and instead use a much better system. But first, what's changed with Tesla Australia? Right now, the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus has dropped its claim range from 508 kilometers to 448. That's an 11% drop. Long range variants have seen 77 kilometers removed. Performance down from 628 kilometers to a still respectable 567 kilometers. These 9 to 11% reductions can be explained by how car makers are required by government to show how far a car can go on a tank of uh, electricity. The EPA cycle, established in 1978 and last updated in 2009, sees vehicles tested both in labs and on roads. The main test is 17.6 km long and is conducted at an average speed of 37 km per hour with frequent stops. That's a good thing for EVs because they're able to recoup their energy and get it back into the battery. A modest top speed of 96 km per hour is required using the EPA method. In addition, there's 16 km of free driving on actual roads, averaging between 77 to 96 km per hour. The EPA method is regarded to be the most accurate method of estimated range for an electric vehicle. Next up is a World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test, or commonly known as WLTP. This test is conducted in a lab, not on roads, which is a problem as you'll soon learn. Divided into four parts, a 30 minute cycle covering 23 kilometers, half of it simulating urban and then freeway driving. The average speed of the test is 46 km per hour, with maximum of 131 km an hour. O and PS accelerating to that lower speed is done over a very slow 15 seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds. That's obviously very slow, hyper mining sort of territory, and I don't think indicative of how most people drive. And so it's this issue, plus the fact that it's done in a controlled environment with no wind, means that range is more generous with WLTP. Typically, typically saying that a car can do 10% more kilometers than the EPA tested versions. And this is where we get to the new European driving cycle. Unlike its title, it's not new. Rather, it was designed in the 1980s and sees cars tested in a lab on a single cycle with wheels turning on rollers to simulate gradients and driving conditions. The NEDC test only covers 11 kilometers or 20 minutes and does two phases. One third is designed to simulate non-urban driving with average speeds up to about 34 kilometers per hour and maximum 120 km per hour. The remaining portion of the test measures performance during slow stop-start urban driving. This obviously favors EVs which love to recoup energy, so it gives more kilometers from the testing method. Oh, and unlike WLTP and EPA methods, NEDC doesn't require testers to have the car's air conditioning on, nor any of the accessories all of which will actually give a car additional range. The result, NEDC can grossly overstate an EV's range by as much as 40%. Check out these figures. The Chevrolet Bolt could do another 160 kilometers of range just because of NEDC over EPA. It's ridiculous. Which is why I've often said that Tesla Australia should never use NEDC to state how far a car can go, as some customers don't know the true range of an EV and will, see, and will be seriously disappointed when their brand new Model 3 Standard Range Plus is now parked in their driveway, they charge it to 100% and then they're saying like, 
I don't understand. It's saying I, I can only do 400 kilometers on one charge. What am I doing wrong? It makes Tesla look like liars. Now hold up my little keyboard warriors. I know that no one should believe efficiency and range labels on cars, no matter what energy source is used to power it. But there are several key points that need to be learned from this. First up, not everyone is like us. Sure, we know that an EV's range is significantly, significantly impacted by rain, wind, temperature, tire pressure. I could go on. Second, all other car makers in Australia use WLTP in their figures. Instead of putting up outrageous and incorrect NEDC claims, they bury it in the fine print. That means that when you, as the average consumer, start going down the road of shopping for your brand new shiny EV, you might be misled in thinking that a Kona EV couldn't go as far as a Tesla Model 3. But no, Tesla used to use NEDC, meaning that consumers would not get that range, and as we like to call NEDC, it will not even be damn close. And finally, not all car buyers are aware of an immensely powerful database known as your local EV community and the EV database website. Here, you'll get real world range without all the upsell and lies that go with car makers' promises. So, this change by Tesla to WLTP is long overdue and very welcome by me and no doubt many Australians. All right, folks, well, that brings it to the end of a rather short episode. I do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do consider subscribing. It's free. It helps the channel. And oh my gosh, uh, your comments are awesome. Really do appreciate them. Keep them coming. If you want to support the channel at the next level, please do come over here to Patreon where you get early access to news, polls, behind the scenes and content that I honestly couldn't, <laughs> I can't show you here. If you want to check that out, do so. It's only like $2.50 per month. And uh, yeah, thank you once again to all of my awesome patrons. And otherwise, hey, you be good and you be great.